Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, as we did promise uh, during the presentation, we promised insha'Allah ta'ala that we are going to make some little practical uh, explanation of what Tawaf is all about practically. As we all heard from the presentation, Tawaf is one of the fundamental principles of Hajj. After we must have put on our ihram. Ihram is simply two white garments for men. One garment will be tied on our waist and the other will be used to cover our shoulders. We are not allowed to open any part of our shoulder after putting our ihram. Just, I didn't mean we have the ihram here, we will have show you the practical aspect, how to tie the ihram. But for our information, some of, us, some of us will tight our iram, at the end of the day, we cannot move. It will be so tight, we will not have the freedom to move around. So when, 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 whenever we have our, our, our iram, when we want to tight our iram, we should open our leg a little bit. When we, we, as we men, if we want to tight our iram, open our leg a, a little bit before we tight our iram. So whatever mode we use to tight it, since we have opened our leg, to exactly the distance of of our feet, in between one feet to the other, it will not hook our leg. But when you are tightening your arm, if you just stay like this and tighten it, it will be very difficult to move around. So it's okay for you when you tighten your arm after open up your leg, you can use your belt and belt up to avoid losing up the, the arm anytime. And the other one we need to put our shoulder is just to use to cover our shoulder. So after, when we take our arm, we don't need to open our, one of our shoulder until we, are, we started our tawaf, particularly the first three circumvolution. So after our hiram, hiram for men is that white garment. Hiram for women, we need a very thick uh, hijab material that is not fashionable, that is not attractive. So the, the material must not be so light and it must not be too tight to the body, a little space where any muhrim female pilgrim will have the freedom to move around without any intimidating to the, female, to the male folk. So your garment, which you are using for ihram as a female, must be a very hijab, yani thobun wasi'a, wasaqilan, must be a cloth that is a bit thick, not so light, and it must, it must not touch the body up, it will be a bit free, why the shape of the body will not be visible for anybody, it's just to protect yourself from intimidation and protect other Muslims that are around for the Hajj period. Any act of indecence in that area will be manifold, will be multiplied in punishment. May Allah save us from punishment. So we have to be very careful. We are going there for ibadah, not for playing, not for attracting anybody. We are going there to attract our Creator, Allah. Do everything possible to seek for Allah's pleasure. And abstain in totality from anything that will lead you to displeasure from Allah. I hope I'm communicating. So our ihram is simple. Women ihram has no color. You have the choice to put on your black, red, green, white, but it should be plain, clean, and not attractive. One should not use anything that is attractive. You, are not, you don't have the right to cover your face, your hands, and your feet. These three places must be open. But after you have the choice, according to the narration of Nana Aisha, when you are in Iram, if you see a garden of men, or you want to pass through them, you can bow down your head, or you can draw your hijab very small, close down, that can just even cover just a little part of your face. I hope I'm communicating. Just to show that really, you have the fear of Allah in you, 
not for show or for anybody to be intimidated. So after the Iram is okay, and you have put on your Iram, you are coming to Kaaba. You are coming, maybe you landed in Medina, you come to Dhul Ulaifa, that is the Meqat of anybody coming from Medina. So the Meqat of people coming from Medina is Dhul Ulaifa. You take your guslu, your ritual bath. After your bath, then you put on your Hiram. After putting your, your Hiram, male, white garment. One under, the other up on their shoulder. Two rakat nafil with that ablution, with that guslu. Uh -huh. If you have the opportunity, the chance, you, 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 you can remove all the, all the air, the pubic air, the, all the air in the body can be removed, only the one in our head and the one that is our beard. So every, all the air can be removed to purify all the body, to clean off everything, so that we will be very pure, we will be very pure in the sight of Allah. Then nothing should be with us, only our Hiram should be put on, with the intention of meeting our Creator Allah. So after that, we move to the mosque and perform our nafil, two rakah nafil. After that two rakah nafil, then we make our intention. Allahumma labbaika, labbaika Allahumma umrata. Labbaika Allahumma umrata. So after our intention, we are not allowed to start Talbiya after our Iram until we ascend. Either the boss of Al Kawthar that is taking us along, until you sit down, you balance. You sit down. That is when, when the Prophet sit down and balance on his camel from Zulu Ilaifa. That is when he raised unto Allah to answer the call of Allah. So the Talbiya now will begin at that point. Some scholars even say your intention and your Talbiya should go in conformity at the same time. When you attain, the point of starting your, 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 your traveling, either in the car or in the bus. When you sit down and you move, you, have, you started moving, that is when in the bus, collectively everybody will now make his intention. Labbaik Allahumma umrata, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Since then, you continue your talbiya. Talbiya is simple, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. La sharika lak. We shall continue this supplication. We shall continue this supplication. We can still indulge into other supplication. Recitation of Quran. La ilaha illallah wa adawla sharika la. La ul mulk wa la ul hamdu wa la kulli shayin qadil. Al istighfar astaghfirullah wa atubi ilay. As salatu ala nabi Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabi Muhammad. All this good invocation to Allah is halal. And we can even have a lecturer in the car or in the bus to lecture us so that we can list it. It's either you get yourself busy with the Talbiya or you get yourself busy listening to other lectures from the scholars in the bus. Let's assume we've attained the level of moving from Mudul Ulefa, we are moving to Mecca. Immediately you go to Mecca, the first duty is move straight to the house of Allah, at Takbir. That is the aim and objective of your coming. You are, not, you are not coming to Mecca to sleep or to enjoy anybody's hotel. Their AC is not superior than your AC here. Get it right. You are, not there, you are not going there for pleasure. You are going there to seek for Allah's pleasure. And you must almost remember, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam that told you to come and take the system of Hajj from him, the Prophet categorically said, anni manasikakum. If you want the best Hajj, Copy my Hajj. Copy from me. Should I use that language? Copy from me. Use my system of Hajj before your Hajj will be accepted. The Prophet has no any, he has no any hotel to lodge you. He has no any C class or five class or ten class. You are just opportune. We are opportune. We just have the privilege. You can see Hajj. 1885, Abi. 1885. What of 1785? What of 1685? 1,000 years, how would Hajj environment look like? So we are just lucky to find ourselves in this time that everything is so, so flamboyant, everything is so beautiful. So you shouldn't now, don't allow Satan or Shaitan to tempt us, satanic temptation, so that you just go and go to Hajj and go and sleep in the hotel room with AC, you lock yourself up. You can do that after you have performed your the rituals, the exactly what brings you. Consider the amount of money you, 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 you pay. Consider the stress. 
consider that Allah just helped you to choose you. You are not the best among the Ummah. You are not the richest. There are some people that are more richer than you. Allah did not call them. They don't even attach importance to what you are going to do. That is how they will be living their life till their life finish without doing their Hajj. They will now go to the grave, biting their finger, on vain. It cannot be collected anymore. Millions of them, that is why you see here, is chasing them around. Because they did not consider Allah first. Whatever they got in this material world will just vanish with the world. So whatever you send home, not your home or in your village, not in, in Kano or in Sokoto, what you send home, what you send for yourself, you send home to your grave, is your, is your gain. Is your gain. So you are sending a good hajj home. You are going to meet your thing in the grave. So please, you are not going there for pleasure. Be serious. As you are coming into Mecca, go straight, just find a place and keep your luggage. We have a sister who asked a question that if somebody is tired, it's normal. You know, tiredness has category. There is tiredness, and I think whoever goes with Alcantara, there will be no tired. I don't think you are going to be tired. Because from one AC to another is. From one enjoyment to another enjoyment. So if somebody is not lazy from home, I don't think you will just travel. It's just four or five hours journey. Four or five hours from, Mac from Medina to Mecca. And not a stressful one. You have a balanced chair. You have a very fantastic things that will keep you on. Your Telbiya, your Ibadat, you are on. Be energetic. Prepare your mind that I'm facing Allah. I'm here to worship, not to sleep. Just reserve your sleeping. The remaining of your sleeping, there is enough time. You are going to sleep in your grave for thousands of years. You will sleep and tire in your grave. So, but it's better you make a very good sleeping. Prepare a good sleeping from now. So, if somebody distorts a good sleeping, then you should, you, you, you should better think twice now. So, when you get to Mecca, just keep your bag in your hotel. Face Kaaba streets. Don't be tempted to rest or to sleep. Tell yourself, I will not rest. I'm here for Ibadah. It is what you tell your heart, your heart will respond immediately. Something will tell you, say, ah, I do the number. So remember that you are here for a serious matter. Here is not Nigeria. Uh -huh. You don't know in the next hour, you may lose your life. We don't know where we are going to die. So we, there are so many people who slept. From sleeping, they moved to, to Kabari. Uh, is that not so? Many people died. So it will be a great loss for you. You just move into Mecca. You did not perform all the ibadah. You waste some little time. We don't know when are we leaving this world. Try to rush. The prophet said, anybody that has the opportunity of doing art, do it quickly. Before something that will stop you will come and stop you at Takbir. Coronavirus stop us or it did not stop us. We don't know how many corona is on the way again. We are not, pray we are not praying for it. May Allah save us and protect us all. So please, let us use this opportunity well. Keep your bag immediately you come to Mecca, move to Kaaba Street. When you move to Kaaba, immediately you set your eyes on Kaaba, just say, Allahu Akbar. That's the first thing. When you see Kaaba, just praise Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Attach your heart to the, to the house of Allah. It's a sacred point. It's a sacred house of Allah. That Allah creates a great benefit. He glorified that point. It's a point which whatever you, 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 you ask Allah, you shall, be, you shall be given. So without taking much of our time, exactly where I put this white handkerchief is what we call our Adjarul Aswad. That's why this white handkerchief serves as the, the black stone point. Yes, the black stone, which is very essential. It's the starting point of our tawaf. This tawaf, I'm saying we have four types of tawaf. How many types? Four types. So Tawaful Kudum, that is Tawaf of Arrival. Tawaful Kudum, Tawaf of Arrival. The second one is Tawaful Ifada, which is the compulsory Tawaf. That is, we call it Tawaful Ifada or Tawaful Hajj. It, they are the same name. We can call it Tawaful Ifada or Tawaful Hajj. That's number two. Number three is Tawaful Wada. That is farewell Tawaf. Which, if you do that tawaf with your father, you are not sleeping Makkah that day. If you sleep Makkah, that tawaf is, is null and void, it's gone. If you sleep Makkah, you are going to do another tawaf with water. 
So these are the three. The number four is Tawafu Tatawa. Out Tawafu Nafila. Tawafu Nafila is better in the sight of Allah more than Salatu Nafila. I think I'm communicating. So somebody who performs Nafila, that is why during Ramadan, people that are very wise, who have a great knowledge, when people are doing Tahajjud, Qiyamulayl, you see some people are doing what? Those people that are doing Tawaf, they are more in reward, more than those that are in Nafila, at Takbir. Because Tawaf is a very great Ibadah. You cannot do Tawaf without ablution. You cannot do Tawaf without state of purity. If you are impure, you can't do Tawaf. And if your ablution break, your Tawaf will stop. It's just like Salat. Can somebody perform Salat and he pass gas, will he continue that Salat? He has to renew his, so is Tawaf also. So that, you, don't need, you don't need anybody to tell you that, in which state can I perform Tawaf? Just like Salat. Anything that breaks your Salat, break your Tawaf. And you cannot complete your Tawaf until with Nafil. It is Salat that we use to complete your Tawaf. Two rakats. Without that two rakats, your Tawaf has not completed. That is the rakatain fi makama Ibrahim. So now you come in and see Kaaba, you say, Allah Akbar. This starting point, you will see one green light in Kaaba. There is a green light. That green light symbolizes the starting point of your Tawaf. So just so simple, as I'm standing here, just your, your starting point is the general Aswad. If you have the opportunity of coming closer, kiss the stone, it's a stone of the Prophet. It's an ordinary stone. Umar say, you are an ordinary stone. You have no any benefit that you can give me, you cannot even hurt me. If it is not because I saw the Prophet kissing you, I will not kiss you. To tell anybody that we are not worshipping the stone, you get it right. We are not worshipping it. It doesn't attach any importance to our life, but it is the sunnah of the Prophet to show respect because that stone is from the paradise of Allah. Atakbir. Prophet Adam come along with that stone from, the, from, from paradise. So that is the stone. And when they are constructing the Kaaba, they want to reconstruct it. I will just pass this to you to tell you the spirit in that, in that Kaaba. There is two green stones. Apart from this other aswad, this black one, there is other two green stones in the foundation level. They want to use shovel to remove the green stone to perfect the foundation. They want to raise it up. During the reign of Umar, Khalifa Umar, do you know that when they try to use shovel just to touch the green stone and shake it, the entire Mecca shake like this as if they are going to be an earthquake. The entire Mecca shake like an earthquake. That is why they, they just say they should they shouldn't touch it. They should leave the elevation level up the way it was, the foundation level. So it's a very powerful area, and nothing can cross ahead of the Kaaba. No plane or jet or anything. The historian, the scientists have tried everything. They've confirmed that it's a center of orbit in the world. Nothing can pass through it. So and it's the center of the earth. So it is a point that Allah ordained us to come and worship Allah and pray for all our need. So may Allah grant our request. So we are starting the tawaf from here. If you have the chance, kiss it. If you don't have the chance, just point it. When you point on it, just say, Bismillah, Allah Akbar. Bismillah, Allah Akbar. Immediately you do, just turn. Start your tawaf. Anti-clockwise. Continue all you can. You have the time to say azkar, la ilaha illallah. You have the chance to say astaghfirullah. You have the chance to say salatu ala nabi. You have the chance to hold your Quran and continue reciting your Quran and continue to do your tawaf. You are going to do seven times. So when you go around, la ilaha illallah, wa adawu la sharika la, la ul mulku la ul hamdu, wa la kulli shayin qadir. So when you come to this point that is next to Ajarul Aswad, this point is called Rukul Yamani. The next angu. That is next to Ajarul Aswad is called Al Rukuni Al Yamani. From this Rukuni Al Yamani, if you come to this point, you, are, you must say a special prayer. A special prayer which the Prophet taught us was Rabbana, Atina, Fit Dunya, Asana, Wafil Akhreti Asana, Wakina Adab Nar. That is the prayer you will be saying till you reach this point. So when you come here, hold 
the first finger. That is one. All you need, just, just you use your finger. Just fold one finger. One. Then you say, Bismillahi, Allahu Akbar. Or if you like, it's the, the first one that is compulsory, you say Bismillah. All other, just continue to say Allahu Akbar. Then you continue again. So you go around, whenever you come to Rukul Yamani, say your Rabbana, Atina, Fid Dunya, Asana. Wafil Akhrati, Asana, Wakin Azabana. You can continue supplication. You can even stand in any little corner. You can stand at a point, continue supplicating for yourself, for your country, your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, your children. Everything that, even your friends that send you, that call your attention that, ah, I need, I need a baby. Oh, I need a good job. Supplicate. Tell Allah everything you request there will be granted. May Allah accept our prayer. So that is how we shall be going. We shall be going every turn. Just fold your finger. Every turn when you come here, hold, fold your finger. So if you get confused at a certain point, you say, ah, am I is it three or four? Is it three or four? Just choose the lowest one. You have, you have, stomp, you have stabbed the shaitan by the face. Because he wants to confuse you. The, 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 the problem of shaitan is that he wants you to do six, not seven. Because if you do six, your tawaf is null and void. It is seven. Anything below seven will not be accepted by Allah. But if you do above seven, Allah will, call, will, will collect the seven. The other two or three is... Then I feel like it's additional. You will be rewarded for that even. Not even just, unless if you do it intentionally. If it is intentionally, then Allah will not accept anything intentionally in contrary to the teaching of Prophet. So, so, so that is how we do, we go for our tawaf. When you come to this point and you count number seven, number seven, to Alhamdulillah, you complete your seven tawaf. The tawaf cannot be completed. You now move to uh, what we call Makama Ibrahim. It was revealed that that Makam Ibrahim is a standing point of Prophet Ibrahim. He used that stone to erect the building of Kaaba. He was building Kaaba, you know, like a bricklayer. If a bricklayer is building house, when he reached the level of linted, you know, they used to use this wood or anything that they would clamp, scaffold, have you? So there's no, no scaffold by then, no katako, nothing. He now called his son, Ismail, get us a big stone because the Kaaba has reached our, our height now. It's like my hand is not up to the high, highest level. Get me a bigger stone. So he, his son, Ismail, get a very bigger stone and brought it for his father. So it was that stone Anabi Ibrahim clamped on and the son is giving him the remaining of the stone to complete the building and raise the height of uh, Kaaba according to the command of Allah. When they finished the Kaaba, all the four angles, he now come down. When he came down, Allah now command him to observe Salat. At that point, to glorify Allah for completing the mission of Allah on the earth. Because it is a command of Allah. Allah commanded him to build the house. That is why he came to Ismail say, Allah commanded me to do something. Will you help me to do it? Before he even told his son, he visited his son three times after he left the son, just like a few months, a baby of like just four or five months. He left them in Kaaba. Nothing by then, nothing. It's a pure desert. Nothing. The mother, Hajara, and the baby was left, just four months baby. Three, four months. So he did not visit them till three, only three times in his life. The first time, he did not meet Ismail in, 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 in the house. He met the wife. That is why you women should be very careful. You have to be very careful in holding the affairs of your husband's house. You are the pilot. You are the architect of your house. Whatever you do in your husband's house today will elevate you in this world and will elevate you on the day of judgment. Whichever position you position yourself in this house today will be the result. The first wife of Prophet Ismail, because Prophet Ibrahim was coming to build Kaaba. Allah commanded him to come and build Kaaba. So he first came to seek the, in, the assistance of his son. He was the one that gave back to him, oh, but he cannot do that work without meeting his son in a very good condition. State of mind, full iman, energetic. But when he came, he did not meet the son at home. 
he met the wife. He said, where is, he? where is your husband? He said, ah, he has gone to, to get some food. He's a hunter. He, he went to hunt what you're going to eat. Hey, OK. How is your condition? How are you living? Uh, mm, we are just managing you know, nothing. Nothing. We are just abject poverty. Nothing but poverty. Conceal the secret of your husband. Keep the secret of your home. Say good thing about your husband always. Say good thing about your home always. It will open the ways, the, 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 the doors of blessing to your life and your children. Look at this woman. She condemned the house. She said they have been in wretched. They have been living in abject poverty. And maybe it's reality. They are living in abject poverty. But must she expose the condition of the house? Must she? Instead of her to say, Alhamdulillah, to glorify Allah, she did not say that. Because of that habit, Prophet Ibrahim asked to go back. He did not wait for the son. Allah told him, that this is not the right time for you to build Kaaba. This one cannot help you to build Kaaba. He's not in good condition with this report of the wife. That is why the, the time of building of Kaaba was extended. The first visit he came, he met the house in a very wrong situation. He now told the wife, okay, when your husband come back, tell him that the threshold to the door of this house is not good. He should change the threshold. He should change the threshold. The key to this house, the door to this house has a problem. He should change that door. You now go back. It, when, when Prophet uh, Ismail came back, the wife did not even bother to tell. But as a prophet of God, he just walked in, he, he felt the spirit that his father is around. He's a prophet, that is the miracle of prophethood. He feels that his father is around. He said, ah, my wife, is there no any visitor that visited me? He said, yes, yeah, there's one old papa that came. One old man. You know, we have some people like this in, the, in Abuja, some women in Abuja, not people like you. You are all good women. We have some in Abuja here that they are, are, are Aboko Akida. No any member of the family will visit them. They prefer dog to be with them. Dog to be around. Any member of the other will never come. That is the attitude. May Allah save us from, from bad, from bad attitude. This type of woman, this is what she denied the entire Ummah to build this Kaaba you are going to visit because of, of her bad habits. When Ismail now says, ah, one old man, there, is there any message? He says, mm. he asked me about you and our condition. I told him that we are, we are living in high poverty. We are having problems. Maybe you want, to, you want to beg for something. I just blocked him there. Ah. Is there any message? He said, well, he said, the threshold of your house is not good. You should change the door. He said, okay, you are that door. <laughs> you are that door that is bad. You are the door that is bad. Pack your load and go back to your family. He divorced her immediately. Because with such woman, the house of Allah can never be built. A takbir. To tell the position of woman in our life. If a man did not have a good on good, if a man does not have a good wife, he's having a problem. If you see Imam come to mosque doing kobli and badi, kobli and badi, <laughs> there is problem in the house. There's a time where an imam came to the mosque. He has already come to the member. He now feels that there's no cap on his head. He now says, Mala, he now hood Lanka. He says, Ah, so I did not wear a cap. He, did, he never knew that he's not wearing a cap. Because of the gimmer of Madame in, at, at home and Adjas at home. So may Allah continue to bless you. So if somebody have a good wife at home that gives him rest of mind, Islam will be good. So Kaaba wasn't built by then. He now married another woman. Ibrahim now came. The, you know, where is your husband? Uh, he went out. What is your condition? Uh, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for everything. We thank Allah for everything. You are welcome, sir. You are, what am I going to give you? Say, uh, what, do you what do you used to take here? What do you have? Uh, we have meat. We have water. We have good water here, and we have good meat. Uh, and Ibrahim said, may Allah bless your meat and your water. With that blessing, our Prophet Muhammad said, that blessing, that prayer, that Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Ibrahim mentioned will be enjoyed till the end of life in Mecca. Anybody that is living in Mecca will live with water and meat and nothing will affect him. It is only Mecca that can have the benefit. But any other part of the world, you cannot live on meat and water. You need some other tool and jollof fries and other things. But in Mecca, you can survive with meat and water due to the supplication of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So with this, when he came back, he said, tell him that this door is good. He should keep this door. I'm coming back. He should prepare. I'm coming back. He should prepare himself. I'm coming back. So he went now and prepared himself. He came with all the instruments we used to build Kaaba. When he just came for the third time, they came and built Kaaba. So after building Kaaba, 
He now they now come together to praise Allah at that Makoma Ibrahim. The foot point, the foot, the foot print of Prophet Ibrahim was on that stone. That footprint has already disappeared now. The government of Saudi are just trying to make some little amendments and they now build that iron gold around it. But there is a very pure narration that due to the robbing of people during the olden days, people robbed the stone up to the extent that the footprint disappeared. The stone was very, very neat. No any footprints anymore due to the brushing. People would be brushing, rubbing, rubbing their body like this. <laughs> So, but the government of Saudi now re, re, refoot the footprints, they reprint it, and they curb iron gold around it. So when we finish our tawaf, we now stand by that Makoma Ibrahim for Turaka Nafi. So it is not important that you must stand by that place. Any part you find a space, perform Turaka Nafi. After that Turaka Nafi, that is the end of our tawaf. So tawaf is all the same. It's either tawaf al-ifada, our tawaful eh, kudum, our tawaful wada, our tawaful tatawu is the same mode. It is only the intention that differs. It is only the intention that differs. So we should also observe, if you are observing our tawaf, and we did four, and it's time for salat, hold that four with you. After your salat, the point where you stand, when they, st when they stand up for salat, just stand at that place for your salat. Where you stop, maybe you are in this point, just face the, just stand pray. After your salam, salutation, salam alaikum, just continue again. Continue from where you stop, so that you can complete the seven circumvallation of Kaaba. So after this uh, tawaf, complete your tawaf with this Turaka Nafila, then you go for Sayu, Ben Safa, Wal Marwa. So that one did not need any more practical. This is the only area and fundamental action of Hajj is very important. Without tawaf, there is no hajj. It's, very, it's a wajib. You cannot supplicate, you cannot supplicate in Kaaba or replace anything with, with tawaf. Tawaf will hajj, tawaf will father is compulsory. So may Allah accept our ibadah. Do we have any questions related to tawaf? So from there, at least we are good to go after this. If there's no any question, then we can pray and move ahead, inshallah. May Allah give us, bless us with Ajil Mabru. So Imam, please come forward. Mm. Just come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Any question, please? Uh -huh, yes, just the, the importance of Arafah? Arafah, uh, Arafah, Al Hajj, Al Hajj Arafah. Al Hajj Arafah. All we need in in Arafah is to continue saying La ilaha illallah, Wahada wula sharikala. Laul Muluk wa laul Hamdu wa wala kulli shayin qadir. Arafa. God is named from Arafta. Arafta. Understand? Do you get the point? It's a question from Jibril. It's a question from Jibril to Prophet Ibrahim. Jibril holds his hand and, take, and showing him all the mashair, the important points. All the important area of Hajj. So when, whenever they get to Arafah, when they get to Arafah, Jibril asks Ibrahim, Arafta, did you understand what I've been explaining? Is it Araf too? That's where they get Arafah. So that is, that is where the name came. The name came from the, from the interaction between Jibril, Jibril and Ibrahim. So it's a meeting point. Since when, when Allah said, Adam and Awau to descend to this world. When they descend, they all depart. Adam landed at where? At, uh, at, uh, at Mecca. Why uh, Awau, she landed at area of India. That is why she, gets, she got some flowers. She decorated herself with flowers. She has been playing with flowers. She did not, she did not see anybody in the world. It is only her and flower. So the flower she brought from paradise that hang in her body, some of the flower drop in India. That's why in all parts of the world today, there is no place blessed with India, uh, with, with flowers and good aroma and perfume like India. It, it, that is as a result of a wow landed at India. So Allah said they should be looking for one another. They spend 40 years looking for one another. 
So they met at where we call Jabal al-Rahma at Arafah. Jabal al-Rahma is a mountain, mountain of blessing. That is where Adam and Awau, they met after departing from paradise for 40 good years. So it was uh, Awau that first saw Adam. She now pretend. She has been crying, suffering, that she lost her, her husband. You know that is our character, our mothers, eh? What they like, they will say, I did not like. What they want, they will say, I did not want. When they say they need something, when you bring it, they will say, I didn't, I didn't need it again. So it's normal. It's part of our life. So when she saw Adam, so that he, he will not take her for granted, she now hide herself. So when Adam saw her, he now rushed to her and hold her to we thank Allah. So Allah forgive them. So that point where they meet is Jabal al-Rahma. Jabal al-Rahma. So that point is Arafah point. It's a blessed place. Everything, everybody that is in that place on that day, all their sin are forgiven. Allah will ask the angel, what do they need? That is for anybody that... Anybody that cannot find himself in Arafah on the night of Zulhijjah, he has no Hajj. You must be in Arafah till sunset. You must be in Arafah till sunset. So it's a condition. Al Hajju Arafah. So nothing is more powerful than Arafah in the concept of Hajj. So Hajj is Arafah, Arafah is Hajj. So every sin you brought to Arafah will be washed away from your body. And you will, be, you will now become a newborn baby who have no single sin, a newborn baby. And another promise is that you will, you will say bye-bye to poverty in your life. When you come to Hajj and you come to Arafah with good sincerity, with a large source, with full dedication, and you do your practice according to the son of the prophet, Wallahi, be rest assured that all your sin has been forgiven and you have paid bye-bye to poverty. You and poverty you cannot live together again. So you are already a multi billionaire in spirit with Allah. May Allah confirm this on our life. Abi, who wants to manage poverty in his life? Yeah, you, is there anybody that wants to just have a friend, a relationship, a robust relationship with poverty? Nobody. Even the prophet said, I reject poverty. I reject it. Because poverty and carefulty is almost close together. Poverty and rebelness to Allah is very close. So may Allah save us from poverty. So a good hajj, Hajjil Mabrur, we open way for the cleanser. It's a cleanser that cleans up all our sin and our mistakes and all our, uh, our misfortunes. So that's the benefit of Arafah. For Hajjia that has a question about Arafah. Arafah is a blessing. Arafah is a special for all our sin. Arafah is Hajj. Arafah open way for blessing and, and health and wealth of everything. And all your supplication will be granted. Even on that day, tell all your people to be calling you. Tell your people to be calling you. When they call you at home and you pray for them, your prayer will be answered. We, we get some people that they have sick people at home. On Arafah day, they will now call their people on Arafah day to pray for the person who is on sick bed. And we saw so many people that we are healed. People, so people rise up from their sick bed. Allah give them shifa to the prayer of their people in Arafah. So please don't joke with that. It's very important. Arafah is a very powerful point. Any other question, please, so that we can wrap up and move ahead and go. So if there's no any other question, inshallah, may Allah accept our ibadah. May Allah give us the opportunity to present a very fundamental and fantastic comprehensive haji that will give us hajjul mabrur. Hajjul mabrur is an haj that when you come, waman yahuj, wala yafsuk, if you perform haj, you did not utter any bad utterances, you did not indulge into any illicit character, and you did not fight anybody, Roger, the prophet said you will come back home, just like the way your mother gave birth to you. No fighting, no argument, no abuse, no looking to haram. Don't open yourself and look to any haram. If you open and look to any haram and you watch any haram intentionally, you are nullifying your hajj. You are nullifying your hajj. Good act of reward will be multiplied. Any bad, any bad act also will be multiplied. Multiple. It can even multi be multiplied and destroy all your ibadah. May Allah save us from anything that would destroy our ibadah. May Allah save us from anything that would destroy our hajj. May Allah save us from anything that will destroy our iman. And another important thing, check your tawheed before you go. Check your tawheed. Any guntun liar, <laughs> any dang guntun liar or any dang quali of Neyman Sa'a, or Zobin Neyman Sa'a, anything that you are giving, 
for protection. And you know, there are some people that will say, keep this Zobe with you all wherever you are going. The Baba will say it's a protection. That Baba is a thief. He wants to thieve your Iman. He wants, he's an army robber of Iman. He's rob, he wants to rob away all your faith. Don't depend on anything but Allah. Be pure. As you are outside pure, your inside should be also pure. That is why you have to take your guslu, your ritual bath. No any raga in your body, no any frukule or anything. <laughs> anything that people depend on, abstain in totality. You must be pure, outward and inward. Submit yourself to Allah in totality. Without Tawheed, there is no Hajj. Oneness of Allah should be your priority in your heart. Everything you have to submit to Allah in totality. Anything you see on your way, it is Allah's wish. Don't blame anybody. Don't mean, why did you collect our money? What is our benefit? Mm. Reduce complaint. Complain to Allah. Allah, I'm coming out for this spiritual journey. Help me. Assist me. Give me the benefit of this ibadah. Let me complete this worship and accept as an ibadah for me. So, Rabbana taqabal minna. Inna ka tasami dua. Wa natubi laka ya maulana. Inna ka nfabu rahim. Rabbana rzukuna bihajil maburur. Rabbana rzukuna hajil maburur. ربنا رزقنا أجل مبرور وسعي مشكور وعمل متقبلا وجنة النعيم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وإلنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا أسنا وفي الآخرة أسنا كنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما ملت ولا الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا توقع لنا بي وافعنا وقف لنا ورحمنا أنت ملنا فنصنا لكم الكافرين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوبيلك سبحان ربك وبلغت ما يصفون وصلى الله على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. تو مي الله يونايتوس في مدينة أن مكة إن شاء الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.